let me get started here, open the, the repo. OK, so uh, my name is Marconi. And when I'm not busy organizing Scala Conference, I work for Originate. Uh, today I'm going to talk about elegant and powerful Scala onliners. And as you may notice, this is the Scala repo. So all the code here is live. Um, there's no, no smoke and mirrors, OK? It all works. OK, so Java is painfully verbose, OK? Uh, the meager low word takes 129 keystrokes. Or if you use tabs, 125. Uh, you know, it's, it's the butt of all jokes just how verbose Java can be. Scala, on the other hand, has a very powerful and flexible uh, syntax that is concise but not terse that allows us to write much more expressive code. A single line of Scala code can leverage an impressive amount of JVM power. OK, and so let's see some of the most elegant and powerful Scala one-liners here. Using only language features and the standard libraries. I'm not using third-party libraries at all. And our examples were tested with Scala 2.11.7 and Java uh, 8. OK, warning, uh, this is not code golf. OK, this is not about writing the shortest code possible, even though I may try. Uh, cryptic onliners do not impress anyone. So please, code responsibly, write for readability, do not try at home unless you know what you are doing, which I don't. <laughs> That's why I'm allowed to do it. Okay. And it was a lot of fun to put this talk together. Uh, just last night I was reviewing it, and some of the slides I said, whoa, this is cool. So <laughs> every time I look at my slides again, I learn something new. It's amazing. It's like I wrote it, but I didn't read it. Uh, so I, ha I hope you, you, you have fun too, you know, maybe even learn a trick or two. So the ultimate Scala one-liner, this is the one, a case class, okay? So now you are saying, oh gosh, case, <laughs> case class. Who, who doesn't know about case class? No, no, serious, who doesn't? R raise your hand. OK, OK, so <laughs> thank you. The, 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 the volunteers don't know about Scala case class. Uh, but now, raise your hand. Who knows for sure everything, every single thing a case class gives you? <laughs> John, come here and tell us. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> so, but you are brave. OK, so four people, OK? In a, a room with what, 400? 450, yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, there's no Scala doc for a hypothetical case class trait. Okay? And as a matter of fact, if you do have a case class and you run a Scala doc on it, it will not generate uh, documentation for any of the methods that the compiler generates for you. Not even the companion object doesn't show in the Scala doc. OK, um, but on the other hand, even a, a simple case class with just a few parameters could take dozens of lines of Scala or hundreds of lines of, of Java if you were to write them by hand. So this is everything a case class gives you, you know? So it gives you getters. Uh, they are immutable, but by default, there is no setters. But if you do want setters, you can have the setters if you just prefix your parameters with var. Uh, you have Two string equals and hash code. You have a can equal method. You have the copy method, which is uh, immutable alternative to, to sellers. You have serialization, deserialization, um, and it extends product. So it gives you three methods product arity, product element, and product iterator. And then you have the companion object. You have an apply factory method. You have an unapply method for pattern matching. And I bet you those two are reason that why we use case class 9% of the time is just those two methods in the companion object. And you also have curd and tuple methods. So I'm not going to show everything. Uh, 
just the least common ones, uh, and of course the downside, so why not make case class the default? Why not make all the classes case classes? Because you cannot subclass them, okay? And bad things happen if you try. I tried. <laughs> so, so, so let's see an example here. Uh, I created a case class person, okay, that has a name, string, an age, integer, and a boolean. And I'm gonna create an instance of that case class, uh, Jim, okay? And the copy method, in case you don't know, uh, today is Jim's birthday, so now Jim is 28. I just call copy, you get a new instance with some of the fields updated. Uh, the other ones remain the same, okay? Uh, product element, I may access uh, everything from the case class using an index, uh, pretty cool. And product iterator, so it's gonna give me an iterator that goes through all the fields of the case class. Uh, I can call, uh, if I have a tuple and I want to convert that tuple to an instance of my case class, I just call tuple. If I run here, I have Jim again. And there's the curve that gives me a function that takes a parameter and returns a function that takes a parameter and so on and so forth till I get my, my Jim instance back again. So if I run, you can see that A is a function from string to a function from int. I'm not gonna read all things here, but the nice thing is that at the end of this story, I have my, my gin instance again, using curd functions. Uh, of course, if I want, I can just call it everything in a single line, and I have gin again. Uh, extension methods on Java types, I'm gonna try to do this really quick, I'm not gonna explain too much here. Uh, numeric types, we have something like abs, I can call minus one dot abs, uh, min and max, uh, signum, that is going to return minus one, zero, or one if the number is negative, zero, or positive. Uh, range, so we have uh, range that are inclusive, not inclusive, or exclusive, and we can go by step, so we do not need to go one by one. Uh, fold and double, they have methods like seal, floor, round, and to end. Here are the results. Um, two degrees, two radians, um, and this is funny because if I call two radians on an integer, it's going to return a float, but if it call it on a double, it returns a double. I don't know why, but this is how it behaves. Uh, oh, okay, that one went. Oh, this is interesting. We have is valid int and is whole. This is very interesting because uh, not all doubles that are whole can be represented as an integer variable. So here we have things like one is a valid int, 1.1 is not, but 99999, even though it's a whole number, it can, does not fit into an integer. So you have those tests for you that you can call very easily. Char, uh, we have is digit, is letter, is letter, or digit. Okay. Uh, is lower, is upper, good. Uh, two lower, two upper, good too. Is white space, okay. Uh, and range, this is something that I, I don't see a lot. You can create range not only using numbers, but also charts. So here we have, and you can go by step, A, E, I. Uh, okay, string. Uh, we have a multiply, I can multiply a string by an integer, and the result is a, that string repeated many times. Uh, capitalize, okay. Uh, compare to, ignore case, so this is awesome. Okay, zero means that they are equal. Um, and if I have a multi-line string, I have a, true, a lines method, uh, that is going to return an iterator that gives me the string line by line. So I just have it here. Just call dot lines on a multi-line string. Uh, also, in Scala, string is a collection of char, okay? And most Scala collection methods are supported, so I can call map, for all, exist, what, um, anything I want. So if I run, and I have the results here. Okay, array. Uh, so when I create an array in Scala, this is a, a Java array, but 
it, it doesn't mean that you're limited to, to, to use it as a Java array because they support uh, most Scala collection methods as well. So I can call map and sum on, uh, on an array, even though it is a Java array. Okay, collections. Uh, most Java collections can be decorated with Scala interface. Uh, those include all those there. I'm not going to read that. Um, so you just import uh, Java converters. And then I have something like system get env. This is a system is from Java. Uh, get env is going to return all my environment variables. But I put it as a Scala, and then I can call filter keys on that collection. And I hope there's nothing embarrassing here. Yeah, there's not. That's why I filtered <laughs> to avoid any problems. OK, uh, so let's see some of the items that are common to most collection types. Uh, I'm going to use the sixth row of the Pascal triangle as an example here. Uh, nice sequence. OK, so I can call map uh, to do a transformation. Everyone knows that. Uh, and of course, everyone knows that there is a shorter syntax for that. I do not need to write the full thing. I can just call map underscore times two. Now, who knows that there is an even shorter syntax for that? No one. Oh. Yeah, I'll go, someone is saying pass the function. Huh? So I can call map two star. It works. Or I can call map two dot stars. I do not even the parents. And it works just as well. OK. Uh, uh, to some other elements, I could call something like reduce. It's going to give me the sum. But there's something even better that is just sum, of course. Uh, give the same result. There is product as well. Uh, no surprise here. So now I'm going to create a, a function is even, just uh, to, to help me with the next examples. Uh, so I want to ask if there is a number that is even in the Pascal sequence. Yes, there is. Uh, now I want to know if all the numbers are even. No, they are not. Uh, so how many of them are even? I just call count. Three of them are even. So find one that's even for me, uh, six. Uh, filtering and grouping, uh -oh, no code for me. Uh, so <laughs> I can filter by the numbers that are even and the numbers that are not even. OK, they are here. But there is a better way to do that. If you need both sets, you just call partition. And now I'm going to have two sets, uh, two sequence, one with the even numbers, the other one with the odd numbers. Now, what if my partition is not just two, two uh, groups? I can use group by. So now I'm going to group by the reminder of the division by three. Then I have the number that leave no reminder, that leave a reminder of one and a reminder of two when divided by three. So they will be grouped together. Uh, I can take while, so I'm going to take numbers from that sequence till I hit a condition, and I can drop while, so I'm going to exclude the numbers till I hit a condition, then I return whatever is left. OK, good. Uh, and if I want to do both at the same time, there is a, a method for that. There is the span. So the span is going to return me two uh, collections, one with the number that are less than 20, and then the reminder of the sequence. Um, I can ask a prefix length, so how many numbers are less than 20? The first three are, I mean, how many numbers there are till one that is not less than 20 appears? And then, of course, you can have a number that is less than 20 after. Uh, I'm going to ask if it contains uh, the number 20. Yes, it does. That's good. And this is something that we have in Java. We have index of and less index, index of. Not really interesting, but the next one is because I can ask index where and less index where. So I pass a function, and it will, will tell me where the condition is met. OK, good. Um, I can ask if uh, it starts with a sequence, if it ends with a sequence. I can ask if it contains a, a, a slice or and what is the index of that slice. OK, uh, min and max, OK, awesome. Um, now, what if my, I, I don't have just a sequence of numbers? What if I have something more complex objects? 
I can use max by and then I pass a function. So I'm going to return what's the max by that function. So here I have a, a sequence of person and I want the one that's the oldest. Uh, if you don't know, those are Pink Floyd members. Uh, so Roger, Roger Waters is the oldest. Um, I can sort a sequence, okay? And again, if, if I don't have numbers, I can call sort by that it's just like max by. So it's going to sort the people by age. And I can call sort with if I want to do even something even more complex where it cannot be just a field like this. So sort with, I pass a function, and now it's going to sort in reverse order. But of course, this can be as complex as you want. I can call reverse. OK, that's good. Um, oh, oh, OK, let, let, let me stop here for a second. Uh, I learned this trick in the repo this week, and I think it's really awesome. I don't know how many of you no district. So let's say that I create a sequence one, two, three here. Okay. And now I have a, a res one nine six. So I can call res one nine six maps two times. Uh, yeah? Can you like hit enter a few times to move some of the lines off of the board? Yeah, can can you not read yeah, that? I can, I can, that one's just above the heads of the people, the way you're typing is not. If it doesn't work, that's fine. Yeah, I, I, it, it's not going to work because if I hit enter, I'm still going to type at the, the bottom. Okay. Um, okay. So 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 we all know that. You know, what I didn't know is that I can call dot map and let's say five times. Oh, map. Okay, and it works. I do not need to type the res and, and whatever variable it was before. Yeah, that's cool. And I can call here filter. Um, let's say greater than, than 10. Okay, and I can call dot sum. It keeps giving, so you do not need to type the last one. So, so sorry about this intermission. Um, just something that I remember, and I think it's really cool. Uh, I can call reverse and map at the same time. Uh, very good. Uh, I can group. OK. So group is going to return an iterator. This is why I'm converting to list, so you can see the result. So when I run that, it's going to take the first three, then number four to number six, and so on and so forth. Uh, there's a sliding that's going to take the first three, then the drops the first, takes the fourth. So it goes a moving window three by three okay, to the end of the list. Um, so one example where you can use that, I want to find the first three consecutive elements whose sum is greater than 40. So I call Pascal sliding three, find sums greater than 40. And here I have, those are the first three elements that sum to more than 40. Uh, make string, uh, it, it, it will create a string with, with your sequence using whatever is there as a separator in between the elements. Uh, I can pass one that at the beginning, one in the middle, one at the end to create something uh, nicer. Uh, intersect, so I want to see the intersection of my sequence with this other one. It's here, uh, the difference between sequence, uh, the union between sets. As see if a set is a subset of another, um, and I can generate all subsets of a set and all subsets of a given size. You have no idea how useful those functions are for job interviews. <laughs> when they ask you, it's, it's so, so easy. Uh, so you can generate combinations here. You know, those two, th those are favorites of job interviews. I always ace my job interviews. Uh, all the permutations of a sequence uh, to get the distinct elements. This is, this is a nice one, correspond. So what this is going to do is going to pair uh, two sequence element by element and see if uh, uh, a predicate is valid between all the elements. So here I'm going to ask if all the elements in A are less than the respective elements in B. And yes, I, I get true. Okay. 
transposing. So what I'm going to do here is do an x and y transposing. So instead of having sequence 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, and now I have 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6. Instead of horizontal, now they are vertical. Um, and there is this one left that is, it, it will not try, throw an exception if you try to access an element past the list. Okay, parallel collections. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, so they are just like uh, the, the sequential collections, but those are executed in parallel using all your CPU cores. I think after case class, this is probably my favorite one-liner because it's not even a one-liner, it's just four keystrokes and it gives you a, a huge amount of, of, of power, it's something that would take you a lot to implement by hand. So I have my, my, my sequence and I can, I get a parallel version of that sequence and I ask to sum all the numbers this is going to happen in parallel. So you can see how much faster it was. Yeah, yeah. Again, again, that's fast. Okay, to, to some six numbers, seven numbers, using four cores, it's extremely fast. Okay, I'm, I'm joking. Um, so, so just to, to show you that this is happening in parallel, uh, I've got just to print the numbers, so they are totally out of sequence, and if I do it again, oh, they came out in order. No, not in order. One and six are, are, are reversed at the end. So you see, it's random. It's happening in parallel. We don't know the, the outcome, how it's going to be. This is proof that something's wrong in the universe. Uh, maps, uh, so uh, if I have a sequence, I can zip with index, and then I'm going to have a map with the index and, and the sequence. So I'm giving a number to each thing there. Um, and now I can get or else. So if, 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 a, uh, if a map doesn't have a value, it's going to return a default for me. Um, I can filter by keys, that's cool. I can map the values, that's also cool. Now, I don't know why there's not filter values and map keys, because sometimes I do miss them, but they are not there in the, the collection library. Uh, if you're using a mutable collection, you have a get or else update method. So this is cool, because you try to get something, if it's not in your map, it's going to update the map and return that value for you. So what I'm doing here, my collection is empty, but I'm trying to get some elements, and you're going to see that when I try to get B for the second time, which is letter D here, I get the element that I inserted the first time. So it doesn't update all the time, only if the element is not there. Uh, OK, so this was a quick run, because I just want to present you the methods. The real fun begins now. We're going to put it all together. Okay? Those were not one lines. I was shitting. Those were one methods. You know? Just, just you know, a review of the collection library. So the real fun starts now. Um, so let's, the pangram. Pangram is a sentence that has all the letters. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. It's old, old, old. Everyone knows that one. So does it really have all the letters? No, have you ever asked that? Who had counted? Who had <laughs> went there and looking letter by letter, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a range of, of charts, A to Z. And for all of those charts, I want to know if my pangram contains that letter. Uh -huh. Yes, it does. You're a liar. I don't believe you. I want to see it by myself. So I'm going to get all distinct letters, and I'm going to sort them. And here they are, OK? Uh, except that I have an empty space and a capital T there. Uh, let's fix that. So how many times each letter appears? So first thing I have to do to answer the question is to group by, and I'm grouped by the lowercase letter because I want to count the T twice. So here they are grouped, uh, not very useful. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use map values. I don't want to, to, to have the group of, of things. I, I want to have just the size. OK, uh, a little better. It's still not good. Um, let's remove the white space. I don't want and uh, just save it what we have for now. So what I did here is I introduced filter. So I have my pangram. I'm going to filter the white space. I'm going to group by the lowercase letters. And then I'm going to map the values by size. 
What a mouthful. And we are close to what I need. So I'm, now that I have that little monster over there, I'm going to sort by uh, the second element. And no, 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 not what I want. I want in the worst word. I want the most frequent first. So I'm going to sort with, OK, getting there, getting there. Uh, and now I only want the letters that appear more than once. So I'm going to use filter again. And finally, we have our answer here. Those are the letters that appear more than once. Uh, all the other letters uh, appear exactly once. Really cool. Um, OK, so now I want to know all the letters that have the, the, the letter O. Oh, so O was the most frequent one. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, O is the most frequent one. So let's see all the words that contain the letter O. And brown, fox, over, and dog. So what I do is I separate by word, and I filter the ones, just the ones that contain O. Uh, so all strings that contain at least one of a set of keywords. So, so this one is a little complicated here. I have a sequence of strings, uh, of sentence, you know. And I, I, I don't want all of them. I just want the ones that contain a set of keywords. It may contain one, the other, or both, but at least one of the keywords. So just, you have to read in reverse. So you have to read uh, the sentence that contains uh, something that exists in that set, so basically like that. So here it is. So just the two sentences that contain the, my keywords. OK. Uh, let's plot a horizontal chart. This, is, this should be very easy now that we learn about some of the string methods. I just use the star operator to multiply. So I'm going to take my Pascal sequence, and I'm going to produce a horizontal chart. Looks good. Could, could not be easier. So easy, actually, that I got bored, and I decided to complicate things. OK, uh, let's put some value labels here. Again, not big. I'm using the format interpolator, the F, so you can make things a little bit nicer. When I run that, you see that it's all properly aligned. You know, we don't have things aligned to the left. They follow uh, format. But it's still too easy. You know, I don't want to bore you so much. Let's plot a vertical chart. Um, and here it is. <laughs> Let's go. So this is a one-liner that takes two lines. Uh, it happens in life sometimes, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> uh, some one-liners are born that way. We, we have to to love them the same. So I'm going to go from the max value that I have on my sequence to the min value by minus 1. So I'm going decreasing order. For every number, what I'm going to do here is uh, if, if, yes. So what's happened here is I'm going from the biggest value to the lowest value. And then if I have. Uh, if the value that I am at at the moment match the one in my sequence, I'm going to put a star there. Otherwise, I'm going to put just a, a blank. I, I think if you see it working, you're going to believe it me better. It uh, doesn't look so good, but you can see that I have dots on the right numbers, 1, 6, 15, and 20. Uh -huh. OK, let's do a bar chart, because that one didn't look so good. OK, can you spot the difference? between a bar chart and just a plain dot chart. It's, it's just the, the condition. Instead of equals, I'm testing if it's greater or equal to. So when I run this, OK, looks cool. No, looks like a building, actually. Um, so with negative numbers, uh, now just got totally out of hand. You go to my slides and you read this at home. <laughs> Not even I can understand this any longer. Uh, whoa! So, <laughs> okay. Let's see that again. So I'm plotting uh, the the sine uh, function here. You know, this is so cool that actually I want to do it again. <laughs> Let's put cosine function. OK, it didn't take much. Uh, of course, it did 
take a lot of my time. <laughs> but not a lot of key keystrokes, you know. I, 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 once I introduced a friend of mine to Scala, and, and I told him, you know what's nice about Scala compared to Java? Is that you can, with a single line of Scala, you can do the same amount of work that would take you 20 lines of Java. The only catch is that write that single line is going to take you 20 times longer than to write the 20 lines of, <laughs> of, of Java. But it pays off in the end, you know? It's, it's, a, still, it's a still good trade-off. Um, extension methods. This is very powerful technique in Scala. I can create an implicit class that extends and vol, and I can add methods to classes that exist and cannot be extended. So here I'm creating an extension method for uh, integer, so if I call five stars, it's going to print five stars for me, okay? One that I, I like to use a lot, and I have it in almost every single project I work, is an extension method on string that tells if something is blank. So what I do, I trim the strings, and, and, and then I see if it's empty, you know? So if it has some actual content, or if it's just blank space. And yeah, it's true, I can call uh, space dot is blank. It's true, and if I put uh, a dot is blank, it's false. Uh, reading the contents of a file, it's very easy in Scala. I source from file and I give a file name. And again, make string here just so we can see the result. Uh, and here I have a list of all the, the Simpsons characters, okay? Um, I can also process a file line by line, so I do a get lines, and again, I'm going to get an iterator. Uh, of course, to show you some results here, I'm calling to list. So I have, again, all, all, all of them. You, you, what you can see is that the end of line was removed for, for, for me. Um, okay, I can use zip with index, so now I have line numbers uh, on my file. Uh, and, and this is cool. I, I want to get a random line um, from the file. Uh, so I just call you to random next int and the line size. And I got one, you know, a different one. And now I have a confession. Actually, I was going to use a file with your names on, on the file. And I was going to, to, to draft the, the IntelliJ license here. But then last night, we decided to use them to persuade you guys to answer the survey. So I had to change the file. But Right now, one of you guys would be getting an IntelliJ license. Now you have to answer the survey if you want to get it. But, but it's okay. So reading for a file, it's boring. I mean, you can do that in Java. Um, let's read from the internet, and let's hope that the internet is working here for me. I'm going to try to read something from GitHub right now. I just use source from URL. Yes, okay, I have internet. So I got a file from the internet. That's amazing. Um, <coughs> Let's do better, you know? I want to read the news. So I'm going to load something from, from Google News. It's an RSS file, so it's XML. I can call XML.XML load. And let's see what this gives us. This gives us the news. But uh, you know what? I'm not a robot. I'm a human. I want to something that I can read. And here we have the news about Scala right now, live. Let's see if they're talking about us. No, they are not. They are talking about the Pope. Oh, come on. The Pope uses Scala. How awesome is that? <laughs> the Pope is using Scala. It's right there. I'm not lying. This is coming live now from Google. Even the Pope is using Scala. Um, this is another nice trick. I don't know how many of you know that, but you can import instance members. You know, We know that you, we can import uh, packages, we can import class, we can import members from objects, but you can actually import instance from uh, members from an instance that you have in scope. So remember Jim, whose birthday is today? I can do an import Jim dot uh, underscore, and now I do not need to type Jim dot name, I can just type name. And whoa, sometimes it works. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> okay. There is method in my hand. Trust me, you know, plenty of methods actually. Um, so import you to random, and now I'm gonna use it five times for you, so you trust me that it's random. Next int is gonna print a random integer. Cool. Uh, next double is gonna print a random double. Um, 
next Gaussian, it's going to print a normally distributed value with mean 0, 0.0 and standard deviation 1.0. So you can see from this number, the statisticians among us can truly tell that those are normally distributed. There is no doubt about it. Um, uh, next Boolean is going to return, oh, it's just fast. <laughs> You know, it, it's not a fair claim. OK, this one, this one looks almost good. Um, next, printable char is going to return a printable char. That's pretty awesome. Um, next, a string. And then I give uh, the number of, 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 of the, the, the size of the string that I want. And for some reason, it loves Japanese, Chinese, whatever this is. I don't mean to offend anyone, but I, I don't know what he's talking about. I truly hope it's not saying bad things here about you guys. But I have no idea. It must be because we have 26 letters in the English alphabet and 10,000 in the Chinese one. Maybe the reason behind it. So it's not a very useful method in practice. But hopefully, we have an alphanumeric that does the same with more meaningful results for us. Uh, shuffle is going to generate random permutations of a string. Also very useful at job interviews, again. Um, colors, we have colors. Oh, that's cool. You can add green and blue, yeah. Uh, Preconditions. I'm almost out of time, but this is my conference. I don't care. <laughs> um, this is awesome. I hope I, I don't see Amanda. Maybe she left. I hope she's going to talk. Not you, the other one. Sorry, Amanda. <laughs> I hope she's going to talk about preconditions on her awesome talk tomorrow. But this is really, really awesome. You should not have invalid state in your application. And, you know, do not let invalid state to be created. So you put preconditions on a case class. So here, I'm not going to allow that you create a person without name. I'm not going to allow you to create a person that it has a negative age or that is too old. OK, I create the case, the, the person. If I try to create a person without a name, I get an exception. If I try to create a person with negative age, I got an exception. Age cannot be negative. If you are not using require, I do not trust your code. This is just awesome, and it's too easy not to use. Please do. Um, regular expressions. Uh, OK, so regular expressions in Scala are really easy to use. You just add dot r to the end of a string. You can use triple quotes to, to, to not have to escape the backslashes, and it's impossible to read. So here I create a regular expression. Um, and to extract groups from that regular expression, it's even cooler. I just use pattern matching. You know, this is pattern matching, even though it may not look like. Um, and now I have my, my extraction here. So let's see a quick example. I'm going to parse numbers. So I have a regular expression for hexadecimal, octal, and decimal numbers. I define my function here. And now I'm going to try to parse uh, numbers using the three different syntax. and they. I'll evaluate to what they should. And now, quick question, why I'm using underscore star there? Who knows? No? No? Yeah, it's because the regular expression, the extractor, it's going to return you a sequence of the match. So it doesn't have an unapply method. It has an unapply sequence. So I cannot use just an underscore to ignore it. I have to use an underscore star. OK, running system process, this is cool. Um, so if I want to, to run ls, I just type ls.bang. Bang, that's it. Um, OK, but it's not really useful. I want to capture the output, you know? I want to see what happens. So I use bang, bang. And now I have the results of that comment on a string for my own consumption. Um, and you can get really fancy here. So I'm going to call ls. I'm going to pipe that to a grep. And then if the grep is not successful, I'm going to do something else. And OK, so this is what happens. So when I do a ls and grep on dot scala, I get the number of this presentation. And if I do a dot job, of course, I get nothing. 
Uh, okay, oh, we are done, that's good. Uh, reference, uh, if you want to see the slides, I'm pretty sure you want. They're on GitHub. Uh, if you like this talk, you may also like from the same author, idiomatic uh, Scala, your options do not match. Uh, this morning you were handed a little card. It's based on that presentation. Um, and the presentation itself is there. There's a blog post about it. You go to blog.originate if you want to see some awesome content. My boss is here today, don't tell him. Um, and before you ask, I'm pretty sure some people are going to ask, which awesome tool is that that you use to create this awesome presentation? Uh, it's called Represent. I did it myself on a plane heading to a conference uh, using only one-liners. <laughs> the entire tool was written using one-liners. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone. We are out of, out of time for questions. <laughs> <laughs>